is perfect fullness. It is of a nature of bliss that cannot be conceived and cannot be limited. It is of the nature of being which cannot be formed and cannot be divided. It is of the nature of consciousness which cannot be interrupted and cannot be objectified. Utterly non-dual is it. And this, the self, is alone, existent, always. Duality in the shape of the idea of something other existing is only imagination. Duality consists only of ignorance. Ignorance is its cause. Ignorance is its substance. The sense of reality or knowledge in ignorance, the sense of reality in what is an illusion, is entirely borrowed from yourself. The thought of something is an illusion, is just ignorance, and has a seeming reality experienced as I know this. The this part and the limited sense of I is an illusion. The knowing is borrowed from consciousness. So that consciousness plus the objectified notion comes out as the experience, I know this. Being plus the ignorant notion of this objectified illusion comes out as this is or I am. But being itself never becomes dual. Consciousness itself never becomes dual. And the perfect fullness or bliss remains unfragmented. It can never be separated from itself. It is such dualistic illusion or ignorance that is manifesting as the misidentification with the body, with the mind, and of course as the individual entity who has a body or mind or an ego. To imagine yourself as being a body or as if endowed with the attributes of a body from birth to death and all that falls in between, such as delusion. To imagine that what you think, the thoughts constituting the mind, is what you are, or that you're in them somehow, is delusion, dualistic delusion. The idea that you exist as an individual entity or an ego. Some kind of separated individual is the very epitome of dualistic delusion. There is nothing constituting bondage and its consequent suffering other than the dualistic imagination. There is no cause for such imagination except such imagination itself. 
There is no substance to such imagination except the imagination itself. Your real self remains uninvolved, unaffected, changeless in its perfect fullness, eternal and neither born nor perishing. When illusion or dualism, the idea that there's something other, that you are something other than the self, seems to prevail, then is the time for inquiry. Upon inquiry, illusions vanish. What never actually was we could say again ceases to be. Inquire to know who you are as the Maharshi has instructed and find that your nature has not been divided nor will it ever be. The fact is that you can never become other than what the self is. What seems to undergo transmutation or transmigration is unreal. What remains immutable is real. What is real regarding your nature is unchanging. It is invariable for all time. Even time ceases, but it does not cease. Regard the immutable, the eternal, the unborn and unperishing, the undivided being consciousness bliss, alone as yourself. Such abidance in a state of identity with the self alone is rightly called knowledge. No longer regard whatever is objective as yourself. Abandon utterly the false assumption of individuality by realizing it is only that and nothing else. If you practice and realize according to this approach, the innate perfect fullness is found to be ever-existent without anything else whatsoever. <clears throat> 